All right, guys, Joe McDonough here with MyMMANews.com. I am joined by UFC bantamweight Tony Kelly. Tony, how are you? Good to catch up with you, brother. Yeah, likewise, man. I'm doing okay. Just uh, getting things situated for the uh, the holidays. I think I'm going to have some family come in. And I've got boxes everywhere, so. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure, um, you know, and it, it, it is a crazy time. Um, you know, talk to me. What What's it like to uh, – not have a fight scheduled during the holidays? Because I'm sure that's tough to have a fight scheduled during the holidays. You know, like, I'm kind of on that, the uh, the cusp of, of having a fight, you know. I'm, oh, I'm okay. a manager and, you know, we, we've got some stuff kind of looking at March, but maybe even potentially sooner than that. So, man, okay. I'm just trying to stay ready and stay away from the holiday cookies, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> and that'll be the toughest part. Um, you know, anything you can share with us or is that, you know, something that for now has to be kept quiet? I mean, I don't have anything uh, on the books yet. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I'll let you guys okay. know. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, you know, we're looking forward to seeing you back in there. You know, take me back to, uh, you know, Fight Island, your first UFC win. You know, it's been a little while since, you know, you've had time to kind of soak it in. You know, take me through it. You know, what, what are the emotions behind getting your first UFC win, that dream um, come becoming a reality? Man, you know, honestly, you know, it's, it's great having the win in there. It's not exactly the way I wanted to win, you know, um, to follow up my, my fight of the night performance mm -hmm. I you know I've kind of got a, a lackluster performance there but you know I think I did enough to win uh I feel good getting the win but I want to go out there and I want to I want to finish somebody I want to show the world what who I really am you know um that's kind of what I'm, I've got my eyes set on man absolutely and, and you know at the end of the fight there was a little you know pushing and shoving um you know could you take us through that what, what was going on um you know in your head you know, I guess I just misunderstood the situation. Uh, I guess he was really excited and, and you know, differences from, from different countries yeah. and stuff like that. But where I'm from, man, you, you come thumping on somebody's chest, you're, you're all up in somebody's face, you know. That doesn't fly where I come from, you know. I mean, I guess, like, with my buddies and stuff. But he hit me kind of yeah. hard, you know. I, 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 <laughs> I felt like he was over over celebrating for, for no reason, kind of, I don't know. I just took it. Yeah. I took it. Yeah, no, it completely makes sense. Um, you know, one thing that that fight, obviously, your first UFC win, you know, um, was on U Fight Island, UFC's Fight Island. Um, you know, something that 10 years down the road, road you know, you're going to be able to tell these people that you fought on the infamous UFC Fight Island. You know, um, right now it doesn't seem so infamous to us because we just had it, but eventually we're going to look back and be like, holy crap, they, they really just had a whole island and, you know, how does it feel to to not only get your first win there, but but even just to go and compete there? I mean, what was it like? Take us through some of the COVID protocols. Um, you know, what was your day to day there? Oh man, yeah, it's super exciting. It's a big time privilege, especially coming from where I come from. I'm Shreveport, Louisiana. You know, mm -hmm. uh, not too many people here have even heard of Abu Dhabi. You know, so uh, it was awesome to to go out there and represent Louisiana on the map, but. Uh, Man, it was, it was definitely, it was trying, you know. Uh, a lot of people aren't aware I fought at like 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning. It was like just, it, it was kind of chaotic, man. We had uh, <laughs> had like poster signings one day, an interview one day, you know, just all, all these obligations and stuff throughout the day. Never really got consistency, you know. It was, it's like night and day, literally night and day. From, yeah, uh, yeah. US. So it was a tough adjustment, but overall the experience was awesome. You know, they got you – uh, kind of contained in a little bubble they have a perimeter outside so like you just kind of stay inside of that but mm -hmm. everyone was super awesome uh the protocol like we did actually have i think it was like seven covid tests during the duration of there so covid free <laughs> seven for seven um and and what was what what did you guys do uh you and your team for you know like you know we've heard john anik on fight allen saying you know he he stays on american time you know he he stays on um you know he'll he'll stay up during the nights and go to sleep during the day over there some people set it up so they wake up at around the time they're gonna fight um you know what what was your uh your guys protocol or, or you know um schedule going in there so it was very similar to John's. It's uh, So I tried to stay on Vegas time, and actually for the first two days, we were pretty dead on that. Uh, then we got a phone call saying, hey, we need you down here at 9 a.m. Abu Dhabi time to get a COVID test. And yeah. 
just it just messed it all up, man. It was never coming. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the, I'm sure they don't put that into the fact that yeah, you get need to get COVID tested, but your fighters are also trying to accustom to get you know fighting at 3 a.m. over here. So um, you know, best of both worlds, I guess. So you just you just signed with a new um, agency, Iridium Sports. Um, take us through that. I mean that decision, and I think that. When you know, we always hear about free agent signings. We always hear about you know, I got offers from Bellator, UFC, one PFL, whatever. But we don't usually hear the side of a fighter going with a management team or a sports agency. Um, you know, take us through that, and what's kind of the selling point that a fighter likes to hear? You know, I've actually known Jason for quite a while now, and I just like what he's doing. I like what he's doing for his fighters. Uh, his team works really hard. All of the guys, you know, they they work really hard and. I've got the same goals in mind that they do, and I just feel like, you know, a good little synergistic relationship there. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, Iridium is one, one of the best in the business, um, Mr. Jason House. Um, you, you talked about the fight of the night, uh, your first, your, your debut, and then, you know, you said that you weren't you weren't crazy. You know, you did enough to win, but you weren't crazy happy about your uh, first victory in the UFC. Is there always added pressure when you come in and have a fight of the night caliber fight like you did and then kind of added pressure to anytime anyone sees you in there you, you better be you know banging heads and you know knocking out and all this stuff is there added pressure to that uh i mean i guess for some people man me to be honest with you i just go in there and i just represent myself i just try to hold it down and, and i come to fight man i come to stand in front of you and i'm gonna throw punches at you you know what i mean so that's gonna be me indefinitely um, mm -hmm. definitely the game plan going into this fight kind of like it slowed, slowed me down from, from having that type of performance that I wanted to, cause I knew that Ali, he, all he wanted to do was ride that single leg. And I felt him kind of just stall in a lot of positions in the first round. And so it made me really tentative to throw and, and just kind of open up my offense. Cause I knew that I would have to, you know, battle that, that single leg. He was really physically strong like a weird strong i don't know yeah it was hard to grab the traction on because they didn't have too much hair so uh, mm -hmm. yeah i just wanted i like to uh, things, but. i like the uh the description of a weird strong uh <laughs> i like that um and and from your first loss with uh kai um what what was the biggest learning point from that from from your first ufc debut to that second fight what what did you feel you learned the most because obviously it was a fight of the night. It, I mean, it was fifty thousand dollars extra in your pocket. It was it was awesome. The only bad thing was that you know it was an, a losing effort, but albeit you obviously gained some great you know fan base and all this stuff from it because of how exciting of a fight it was. But what was the biggest learning point um, for you between fight one and fight two with the UFC? Uh, just make smarter decisions. You know, I, I jumped for a guillotine when I, I feel like I had Kai hurt. You know, mm -hmm. I was kind of. I was doing what I wanted to do, and then, you know, I interrupted that by trying to finish the fight with a uh, jumping guillotine, and I pulled him right on top of me. Uh, just yeah. a couple things like that, you know. Uh, and I tried to be a lot more patient this fight, and, and I know that it showed, but I think I was way too patient, and it looked like mm -hmm. I gave him too much respect. So now it's just finding that balance and that happy medium. Yeah, yeah. And and we can't wait for you to find it. Um, is that a Louisiana thing with uh, you know jumping guillotines? You know, obviously a big Dustin Poirier move there. Is that a uh, something in the water in Louisiana? Yeah, yeah, I think it's like three for three in, in Louisiana. Like Matt, yeah. Matt Schnell, Dustin, and myself have all done that. Yeah, it's just it's just the Louisiana. They should they should rename it you know the Louisiana instead of the guillotine. Um, so you you did you did mention that there is something next. Um, I know you said it's not official or, you know, nothing official yet, but, you know, you're talking with other opponents and all that stuff. Ideally, what, when would you like to be back in the cage? And do you have any names that you that are excited about? Uh, you know, I mean, there's a bunch of good matchups. You know, I just uh, – I kind of leave it to them, whoever they want me to mm. fight. Y'all fight everybody in that division. I don't care. Yeah. I really don't. Um, but my birthday is coming up January 21st. I would like to kind of get on that that uh, Dustin Poirier Conor McGregor card. Yeah, absolutely. If not, you know, sometime in February will be good. I know uh, I was talking to uh, to Jason and them, and they they mentioned March, so we'll just kind of see where the cards fall. Well, a very happy birthday in January. Um, be a very fun Louisiana guillotine party on uh, out in January uh, for McGregor Poirier. I'd, I'd love to see it. Um, 
And, and, you know, speak more in Louisiana. You're, you're very prideful of Louisiana. Speak about Louisiana mixed martial arts um, and just how far, you you know, that state has come in mixed martial arts. You know what? I'll, I, I'll tell you this. I've been all around the world, man. And, uh, you know, it's Louisiana. I'm, I'm back, obviously, in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. For those of you who don't know, I've been everywhere. Uh, Louisiana has this this fight culture, man. They bring something to the table that a lot of other places that I haven't experienced, right? They just, I don't know, they bring a certain type of grit and, and principles that they instill in you. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's a vibe, man. Louisiana's yeah. got a vibe, bro. And, and, and absolutely, I mean, tons of Louisiana, uh, you know, throughout the UFC roster. Um, so, yeah. It is. It is a vibe, you know. <laughs> there's no other word for it. You know, there's something's going right down there. Um, my last thing for you is a lot of people during COVID um, picked up hobbies, and I know the world is slowly starting to reopen. As you know, I'm over here in Boston. Now we're start starting to close again. So who knows? It's all different everywhere. But outside of fighting, what what's what would you say your biggest hobby is? Uh, you know, for you. Oh, uh, you can find me off in that war zone. <laughs> I love PlayStation, man. I'm I'm a Call of Duty guy. I'm on the sticks. And so when you when you are you know off to Abu Dhabi or UFC Fight Island, does the PlayStation make the trip with you? I, I don't take it on long long hauls like that. But like, yeah, I might take it like to Vegas or something maybe. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when, it's, when it's time to fight, I I switch gears and you know, yeah. all of my kind of goes on that. Awesome. Well, Tony, thank you very much. That's all I've got for you, man. We're looking forward to uh, seeing you back in the cage, hopefully in that January card, but very, very soon either way. Um, And a very happy birthday uh, if we don't talk before then, man. Thank you very much, brother. Appreciate you having me on, man.